You good? Okay, so it's 6.01. I'm going to call the regular select board meeting to order. First thing is uh, set adjust agenda. Our agenda, I feel, is plenty long. Is there anything anybody wants to strike from it? <laughs> um, we could table item, no, find it, I'm sorry, item four to the next meeting, but I think it'll be quick, so it's up to you. Yeah, let's keep, leave it. Okay. That's a quick one. All right. Okay. So we're going to roll with the agenda as written. Communication from the audience. Are, we're a little, uh, a little bit thin with the audience. They're all in the pool. They're all in the pool. Uh, next is to approve minutes from the last regular meeting, which was June 16th, and the last special meeting, which was July the 14th. I do. Uh, do them separately because I, can, uh, I wasn't that one. So I'm sure I will abstain from one or whatever. I move that we approve these minutes as written. Which ones? 16th, uh, June 16th. 16th? Okay, June 16th. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion on the June 16th uh, minutes? June. Uh, so all in favor of approving them as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next uh, motion is for the 13th. July 14th. And you're going to move that we accept them? Move that we read them, accept them as written. Second. And we have a second. So, any comments on those minutes for that special meeting? Uh, all in favor of approving them as written, please say aye. 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 I'll abstain. And one abs so four ayes, one abstention. For that, from the absentee, because we held that in the middle of the day. All right, so motion carries. Thank you. And thank you for staff for putting together good minutes. It's super helpful. Um, next, uh, town manager's report given by David Upson. All right, um, Tracy Martin started as our new community development coordinator <clears throat> on July 5th and has been getting acquainted with the job as jumping in with both feet. Her office is on the third floor here, which she loves. Great. Um, Tracy's working on just getting a list of the, of the grants we have going, ongoing, getting a list of available um, funding opportunities, matching it up with um, working with her. Um, we've got a, the whiteboard downstairs. We've got a list of projects down there. So we're just trying to get a plan of attack and go after, um, you know, go after the programs that we can utilize to get the projects done off the list. Awesome. Um, so more on that as the, the new position or the new uh, employee progresses. Um, the Meet the New Town Manager gatherings uh, concluded with the last meeting on the 27th. We haven't had a meeting for almost a month. Um, the meetings were attended by 211 people, which led to constructive discussions and thought-provoking dialogue. A document outlining the themes, quotes from individual participants, and potential solutions to some of the hot topics is available on the town's website. Um, we got to put that on tomorrow. <clears throat> Stay tuned for another round of gatherings hosted by the Neighbor to Neighbor Group. So they're working on how they're going to um, move forward with their mission, and which we will support at the, the town level, hopefully. Gary Nolan. Um, consulting LLC has presented me with a preliminary report. I put the email that he sent to me in the folder, yeah, I so I it. thought it would be helpful. Um, I just kind of summarized that uh, Gary concluded that <clears throat> the purchasing of the Davis gravel pit would be a, a positive long-term investment in his opinion. Um, just throw out a couple things. Um, there is currently an estimated 36 to 48,000 cubic yards left in the southern extraction area area and I have um, some maps that I can share and That's where we're currently getting our winter sand as well as several other towns They're truck and sand as we speak or you know during the day um, so it, In the southern extraction area and on the on the conservative end would be about nine years left of sand reserves just in that area um, the area of long-term interest is the southern future extraction area, which is approximately 5.2 acres with the potential to yield 125 to 165,000 cubic yards. So um, at our current rate of 4,000 yards per year and using the median of 145,000 cubic yards, 
and available sand in that future extraction area. We're looking at about 36 years of sand potentially for the town. Um, we but with a byproduct of material. Are you correct. Getting this is community? this is just yeah. so just wrap your head around this one product. Right. The winter sand. Yeah. Um, so we budget for about thirty thousand a year for sand and sixty thousand a year for crushed gravel. So. Crushed gravel is a byproduct of screening sand, so we can take that product and do do a, cru a crush crush run mix um, with that. So that would um, that would be the available byproduct of the screening for sand for an average is three hundred or three dollars and fifty cents per yard, which the current rates to purchase are about four seventy five to five dollars a yard. Um, this so. Just that part, just the sand and crushed gravel part, it makes it an attractive investment. Mm -hmm. um, if you add on the opportunity to open up a, the amendment to the Act 250 permit, which is doable for the extraction of the northern phase for the quarrying of ditch stone and coarse and fine stay mat. So that's like your, your next level material for road building and, um, and there's ditch stone, you know, is, is a coarser, you know, which you don't crush. So we could use that like a riprap, but a, a ledge riprap, not granite. Um, so there's, the, there's that whole thing. Um, so Gary suggested we dig some test holes rather than boring for a cost saving measure. Kenny Davis said he'd provide a man and an excavator to do that. Um, there's some other, you know, a potential, um, you know, purchasing the equipment at the, the pit to use in the deal. Um, and then Gary suggest, or Gary also would provide um, more explanation of operating a sand and gravel pit and then quarrying, the quarrying aspect of it. So the bl blasting, crushing. If, if we, if I want to just kind of piecemeal this, so if we want to move forward with this, we can invest a little bit more in the consulting fees to have Gary explain this more. And go ahead. I just want to add a little context. That, yep. Because, I mean, I think you've been thinking about this, and I've been thinking about it, but maybe if anybody's watching, um, yep. we do currently have a town gravel pit where we do a lot of these activities. We extract. Yep. Um, gravel, we have some crust, and um, so we do that, but we're looking at maybe two years left of material in our pit. We've been down in there for quite a while, and um, so now's the time to start thinking about what we're going to do next. Are we just going to buy all our material, or are we going to look for another pit? And that's why we're right. spending a little energy looking at this. Yeah. And this is basically saying if we were to buy, continue to buy material, it would be this for now, four seventy-five to five dollars per yard. No good. It would probably go up if we we're. That's what we're currently spending on, on just crushed own, gravel. On yeah. Our own yeah, but crushed gravel is more like twelve dollars a yard, not four to five. Four to five is sand, I think. Um, crushed crush run is so, twelve dollars a yard. Yeah, that now. So that part, um, yeah. Sand is six. Right? Sand. Yeah. yeah. So just the sand. So. It's just gonna go we up. need to run the numbers. Yeah, yeah, no, the numbers, are, the numbers are quite favorable. Well, so we budget 90 a year between gravel and sand. Right. Like, that's what's in the fiscal year 23. So, assuming we spent it all, 90 grand a year. Um, yeah. We look forward to the report. Yeah. Yeah, so we want to have him continue to, mm -hmm. yes. That's mm -hmm. it. Or do, does somebody want to make a motion, or do we just want to generally? Agree? I just continue on the path. I mean, we're, the board yeah. generally agrees. We're looking yes. at this. Everybody's on board. Because the next thing is going to tell us what is, you know, it's going to have things like man hours and to do the quarry, so we know right. the actual you know, cost, what the equipment is going to cost. And, yeah. You know, right. right now, we're, we rely on a contractor to come in and do it, a vendor basically, to do the crushing, <coughs> which sometimes, we, you know. That machinery is very expensive. Main is main. It's night, you know, strong. So we probably like, that's what continue to give us. That. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah. yeah we because I, we don't have the staff to do right. it. I mean, there's potential. There's there's, there's many different possibilities of yeah. management. Yeah. We could <clears throat> go in with three other towns and right. hire a company to come in and make 
make the material we want right. for the for the year. Right. And then now we need like we do now, we have to provide loaders and man and dump truck which we have. <coughs> yep. The trouble with screens and, and crushers and stuff, they're very maintenance heavy and they're very expensive and you gotta have people to run them and <coughs> And the problem dangerous and there's just all kinds of <laughs> stuff that goes with it where when McCullough comes in, right. file. So they're like a contract operator yeah. come in. And then we another thing the yeah. another thing too is places like this are not going to exist. No, they're not. And this the powers that be are not really too keen on opening up new places yeah. like this. Nope, but they will be keen yeah. on on gravel um, pits. Permit. Right. Yeah. No. But they'll be keen on Extra earth extraction. One that is oh. already permitted. Amendments are going to be, you know, in areas like this. That's the other thing that's important about that area. The area yeah. is good for expansion. Yeah. It's not right next to the something, you know, a right. school or right. <laughs> right. a community. You know right. what I'm saying? There's what there's some neighbors, right. but they're 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 distant. They're they 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 can you know. The, the closest neighbor now just purchased it, and they, it was a quarry with operating pit when they, you know, so. Yeah. But if they pay 14, I hauled some out of this the other last week. So. Yeah, I was taught how he, 14 you know, is brutal right yeah, now. But they're, they're, they're replacing all the culverts right now. But honestly, the, there's not. I mean, Walker from Stowe gets their stuff off the hill up here in Macville. Salvis comes out of Wolcott. Minash is either Eden or Wolcott. Um, you know, people are traveling great distance. Every, literally every shovel full of dirt or anything dirt related product that goes to Stowe comes from at least 30 miles from Stowe. Right. Wow. Every single, I'm not kidding, that has been an operating category in Stowe area for 15 years. So continue. Yep. Good, Good work. 10 4. Um, and then this is part of um, the community development coordinators. Um, what she's working on. The Planning Commission has recommended that the Town of Hardwick pursue an action plan grant through the newly formed Safe Streets and Roads for All, for All program by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Um, the program funded the new infrastructure dollars, or the program funded with new infrastructure dollars offers both planning and implementation grants. So basically you, we could do a study um, on the safety of our um, our roads, and really with the goal to inc to inc or to decrease accidents and injury. Um, the minimum grant award. Go ahead. Yep. Annie? You know the only problem I have with grants like this is we don't need. To be identified more problems, we need grant funding to take care of the problems that we've already identified. Does it? That's does the, it apply that's to a planning, That's a planning dilemma I have. Is I don't think so. Don't we need to plan for it anymore. So it's not <laughs> like a buy more places to spend money. We need study. to have the money okay. to spend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I did I got, one right, I got one right here in the pot. <laughs> I did have this conversation about getting yeah. these. We're yeah. we're investing in more planning grants and the matches and how much do we want to invest in more planning where we could maybe invest directly in the the engineering and to be fair I would to want get to know more of these projects. You know, I'd need to look into it more to see what we're planning for. Oh that's perfect because in the <laughs> oh, in, in, in further, <laughs> further on in the explanation is I gotta start reading these things. We are hoping to have a member of the select board and a member of the planning commission work with the community development coordinator to explore this opportunity further to determine if it is a good match for our current needs. And what a better person than a critic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they'll feel the same way. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm we need You're somebody in. we need somebody He's to in. look at this with a critical eye. Right. Well, yeah. and it may not be a good match for Right. No, but you, 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 have agree, you, you, you have to agree like, you don't have to agree with me, but you understand what I'm saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna spend twenty percent is gonna be that's that's uh what, forty thousand. Well we don't right. have to go for two hundred thousand. No, but yeah, so I I will learn more about it. Yes, I thank you, mind. Dan. Thank you. Because if it's he gets as bad, MVP of the meeting right here, and we're only at the beginning of the same meeting. Same day. <laughs> so the other thing is sometimes it says it's for planning and implementation, but sometimes they won't give you the implementation money unless you have the exactly. planning and thing that's done. So very well, good point. It, you know, it's so. funded with infrastructure dollars. So yeah. you know, if we can 
figure out a way to get some training for this thing so that we get yeah. the design and that be great. And, right and then right? that yeah. leads us into the This is like the grant. cart. This yeah. is or this is the horse. So we, yeah. we got to have the horse before we put the cart on the horse. Well, you got part this of the horse, the horse on the committee now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, the front you got back. one end of the horse on yeah. the All right, <laughs> right which end is it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I think some would <laughs> well, <laughs> choose so like, We don't disagree with the idea about yeah. Church Street and doing the whole thing <laughs> for that. Totally. Right. Yeah. Potentially that would be a oh, thing that, that okay. maybe this yeah. would match with. Yeah, totally. have it or some of these things. Yeah. When it's yeah. actually the street. I mean, right. Normally I can meet during the day, but I, the other day I just got boogered out. Yeah, you just, we'll, yeah. we'll make it work for you. How's that? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, so I'm done, unless okay. you guys have any questions. Um, you can always reach out to me, but also um, I can give Tom's report because he's not here. So I'm prepared Please to do, do that. that. Can I first oh. ask, is there anything new with the bridge? Is there any update? The, SE group is they're gonna we're gonna kick this off in August. They're they're very busy, mm -hmm. and they're um, they're working on a bunch, closing out a bunch of projects. But I talked to Adam last week or the week before, and he said we're gonna go hard starting in August, mm -hmm. and should have it designed by the middle to end of October. Two designs. So I'm going as fast as possible. That's fine. I just wanted. Yeah. I I know people ask, and they ask me, and I'm like, yeah. well. I was asked about it today. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So I got lost this morning and wound up at Chip Troiano's place, and he asked about the charter change. Have we heard anything more about the charter change? No. 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 Hmm. no. Good question. Don't he said everything's been signed. He, yep, and he said every time I talk to him, he says he'll check into it, but... Nothing. Yeah, but then, yet yeah, he was asking. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. I thought that was, I mean, little do I know, I thought that was all taken care of. The legislature, did they approve it? They, they signed it. I haven't heard anything, but. I thought they approved it. Oh, yeah. So we're waiting on the state. So they approved it, it just hasn't been. Right. So well, and that was who was asking. That's who was asking. I think he's chipped at the state. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. That last yeah. email I got said yeah. they approved it. Yeah. And the, and the question, I don't know if they said something officially. Did the governor but... sign it? And if oh, not, I know. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Right. Well, yeah. that makes more sense that he would ask that. Which <laughs> doesn't, it's supposed to happen so many days after so many days, but it doesn't always. Okay. I mean, there's the LBRT management plan was supposed to be out, I think, May 1st. They changed the due date on the okay. website. So. I like the fact that they actually have one in place now that they just totally ignore. A legend. <laughs> a legend, yeah. 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 We worked on for 10 years. <clears throat> okay. All right. Any yeah, other questions? Foreman. So, Church Street sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they're hauling winter sand. And they've been working on different sewer plugs here and there. Um, we got a big... Um, we got the lagoon at the waste. This is kind of not the road performance report, but um, he's been part of it. Public works. Um, the lagoon, lagoon number two is is empty. Um, our power is is almost operational for the dewatering of the lagoons. So the P and H Senesac is going to mobilize next week, and they're hoping to start um, dewatering soon. But everything's in place to. We're running off of one lagoon. We have the hydraulic curtain we moved over. Um, our chemical addition point has been moved and effluent looks pretty good. Um, so that's where we're at with that project. And you get the, you are setting up for, to use electricity instead of a diesel generator. Right. Cause to save that, us money and make it more efficient. On, well, yeah. On the diesel. dewatering, right? Yep, yep. So yeah, there's that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, there's a lot going on. Have they got through their vacations yet? Or Kenny's on vacation right okay. now. He, so he deserves August, it. We, they all I, deserve I'm it. I'm not questioning that. I'm just <laughs> saying it's you know it's tough in the summer because they have to get those in. And yeah. So are we back to full crew on in August? Or do, are there still more vacations? No. I might take a vacation. Yeah. Well, That's a good idea. Not <laughs> a bad idea. Is there... I, this might be more question for you, Opie, than for Tom, but what's the update on the state finishing the bump outs? And oh, thanks for there are a, quite a few drains that are a few inches above the grade. Are those going to get? Yeah, for a reason. So that's why they did. They raised them for the, for the last coat. Yeah, there's still another coat of, they're going to do a final coat, a finer coat of 
of asphalt and that's going to line up slightly okay. higher than the catch basins. Okay. So all those places where you're seeing standing water, yep. those will be going down the catch basins okay. in the near future. Like and they're waiting to do the bus. They're like working on the... So I was curious They were over at the market today. Yeah, because they seem to be working during the day and they said they were going to work at night. There's, there's Lots a, of people are asking. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. Um, yeah, I've been asked too. So they're working on raising all the structures. So okay. the catch basins, the manholes, the curb stops, um, the, all the valve covers, uh, the accesses. So once they get all those raised, they dug out the, they've done the cutouts, they're waiting on some of the stamped concrete bump outs now, okay. which is I think a different contractor hmm. that are, that's doing those. Because there's um, still some to come, right? Uh, in front of the co-op. Yeah. They haven't done that one yet. No. They've cut it. They've cut it. They've cut it. They yeah. Just oh, they have. Yeah, yeah, and there's one down by Tracy's. So the the engineer is, is pushing for mid to late August for the final coat of asphalt. Okay. So it's coming. They have until November of 2022 to right. finish the project. Okay. It was confusing that there was a sign down on Wilkinson yeah, that had said that Route 15 out. was going to be closed or whatever for Through construction. But was, I think it had to do with that the... That was Walden, yeah. 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 It, was it was the detour. bridge. They closed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is a detour. They sent them all the way to North Montpelier. Yeah. confusing. That's the name, really. Yeah. 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 All Come up to, you came up to the red light and they sent you down 14 South. <laughs> yeah. All the way down to East Montpelier. To uh, all the way back route two because they didn't want to. Because they were doing like, that overpass for wow. the yeah. rail trail. Just for yeah, a they could have sent them up. Yeah. They could have sent them a car, could have went up to Cabot and gone around from yeah. by the fire station. But trucks could. I don't think. Them. I think they, but they have to. Right, because trucks could make that corner. Right. Yeah. Huh. So basically they're putting in. Okay. So it sounds like everything's <clears throat> in process and. It's gonna yeah. be. This is like the temporary coat before the final. Yeah. 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 Okay. What's there now Great. is the temporary. Yeah. Okay. And all the lines. One inch. On all yeah. the lines will change. Yeah. If you see how everything's got white paint around it, yeah. that's so they can yeah. see it. Yeah. They, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And they're resetting a lot of the signs. Yep. Yeah. They're replacing they're some of the faded sweet. signs. Right. Um, and yeah. And then there was one other project too. Uh, I just wanted to bring up, but yeah. we got awesome. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. A lot going on. Oh, All good stuff. Paving. We have our uh, regular paving. Yep. I think maybe next week. Yep. That's going to oh, the, the, the side streets. Like street. the side streets that and are And where, can you remind us where we're paving this year? Church Street, right? Is Lower, Cherry. Cherry. Lower Cherry. Lower Cherry. Um, Lower Cherry. Yeah. I don't know. In that neighborhood, yeah. kind of? Because usually, usually they're clustered. It's yeah. somewhere around there. Is with Elm, Elm Street, maybe? Yeah, there. another one. Down in Yeah, so Elm, I think. Lower Cherry. Dale Street. Cottage. West Church. Okay, so that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't understand why we we'll make some streets smoother, but then we make other streets impassable with speed bumps. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like an awful waste of money. It's we're trying to change people's behavior on that street. It's changed mine. I don't ever go down that street. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Those are the brutal. I don't. There's the speed bumps everywhere. I don't know if you got special brutal. You know. <laughs> I ordered, the, to to be I ordered the extra large one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? No, no. I, but the, grand, the long term plan. I don't plan, have a problem with it. It's a residential street. So I don't, yeah. I'm, but the long term plan is to do something that's more like a speed hump. table or hump. speed hump or yeah. something, right? I, yeah. yeah, but, you know, there's one of those down in Barry they put in, and I honestly, it doesn't slow me down any more than. <laughs> I mean, I'm not <laughs> speeding. <laughs> but I'm not speeding. Yeah, right. well, All right? if you were, right. it would make a difference. The speed is 25 miles an hour. I'm not speeding. If everybody the went the speed limit, there wouldn't right. be a problem. I, I guess. And I, like it, I say, I'm not. I'm, well, ideally, wouldn't it wouldn't it be the ideal that the bump you could travel at or below the low posted speed limit? Yeah. It's just when you go over, it's just like. Yeah, well, the ones down here work for that. <laughs> I'm not, they're <laughs> yeah. not complaining. And, they work no. like they were dead. Yeah. 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 So. And, and, the, and they're temporary. Right. Um, it's a and test, it'll change some but it's also, yeah. you know, some of those people that have bad behavior and speed on that street anyway are driving up into the lawn to avoid those bumps. Really? That's right. Or at yeah. Highland. Benefit. Not helpful. No. Really? So yeah. they, yeah. Big ball. So they're going to, the hump is going to go all the way across. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, all right. So on from the good hump. Let's Tanya has. Moving on. We're so well, no, we got, got Mike. Mike. Oh. And no. then Mike. No. no yeah, sorry. we've got... The police department still yet to oh. go. Mr. Henry. Hey, welcome. Thanks. It's been a busy day. 
Um, I think you know we've done a bunch of upgrades uh, with a lot of our computer systems at the uh, police department because uh, found out that most of them were what, 12 or 15 years old, and uh, uh, so we upgraded five of them. One of them being our our data storage uh, unit, which was uh, a big problem. So now we've got that all set up. Also uh, upgraded our our security system with the. Uh, we were updated with that pretty bad as well. So that's up and running. Uh, we use that with the funds. Um, we also I've got my glasses here. I can't even read my own handwriting. Can I wear your glasses? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Um, <laughs> started a new Facebook page. Um, we're working on also uh, putting up a web page. Uh, so that, uh, because the web page that we had, I don't know if anybody looked at that before, it was, wasn't very good, but minimal. It was minimal. Yeah. Is it linked to the town page? It yeah. will be, once we get it up and running, it will be linked to the town page, but yeah. the plan is to uh, get information out there for everybody and also put on downloadable forms that everybody's looking for. They're, they're calling the police department for, nice. you know, accident reports, yep. uh, you know, trespass letters, that type of stuff, so you can download it from the right there. The office has a lot of experience in trying to get that <laughs> stuff online. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully you can go to one, one area to be linked to the town page. Uh, that's the plan with that. So a lot of technology stuff that we're trying to get up and uh, going there. Uh, most of it's uh, already done, but the web page will still be working on it. Um, and then, so we're working on uh, the cruisers. All of our cruisers are marked up now. So we had oh, one nice. uh, unmarked there for a while. That's marked up. Um, I wanted everything marked. Um, we started the, the bike patrol. I don't know if anyone's seen that out there. Yeah. 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 I got the bike patrol. I yeah. got the bike patrol. I'm like, no. Yeah. yeah. I didn't authorize that by a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> I said How about next year? E bikes. Yes. Yeah. And the e bikes. Yeah, I think, I think we'll talk about that next year. It yeah. just came down to cost and trying to get, a, get yeah. the money. But uh, yeah, we just fixed up what was already there yeah. and uh, put a few of the guys out there every once in a while and we're doing more foot patrols. Yeah, no, I heard, it. I heard it in a positive way. And Me too, actually. I've gotten a lot of positives. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, getting into some of those areas too, just uh, the presence we've been able to do with more people we've been able to do a lot more proactive stuff um, and I think you know the, the quality of life issues hopefully are getting a lot better we're getting a lot of positive feedback on our end I don't know if you guys are getting the same but uh, that's what we're hearing uh, just the proactive out there um, you know we've had a lot of good incidents to uh, George Shelbrick we had a, guy, a suicidal guy with a gun uh, threatening to take his own life and you know, I got a lot of accolades back from people because George Sheldrick went up there, talked to the guy, uh, talked the guy down, um, ended up getting him into the Brattleboro retreat. And it was all good. Uh, so, uh, good success story there. <coughs> um, so we've also, I'm sure you've probably heard this too, been executing a lot of search warrants lately, um, taking a lot of people. Uh, getting a lot of rest, uh, people with warrants, taking them off. Uh, just in the last few weeks, we've executed three search warrants on houses. Um, we've, today, we just picked up uh, a couple of stolen vehicles. Somebody went out to a uh, residence and uh, just started looking around and said, a couple of stolen vehicles here, so. Good job. Uh, those, that was today. Uh, the other thing is we, we had a big federal audit uh, that we got that all completed and that's all submitted. We actually had to get an extension for that because it was uh, pretty, uh, uh, it had to be pretty thorough and we had to make some policy changes as a result of that. So hopefully that's, uh, it's been submitted. They gave us an extension of a month. We, we got it by a week. So we're, we're done with that at this point. Is, well, that, is that something that recurs every so many years? Every three years. Three. And I don't know how they, got by it before in the past because the policies had to be written that weren't in there. Something else that I'm still working on, it's going to take uh, hopefully in another month, we'll have all the policies rewritten. I'll have them all uh, digital and accessible to everybody else. Um, 
we do have now our schedule uh, for the officers, which used to be handwritten on a piece of paper. Now we have that uh, digital. It's on everybody's phone. Um, so it just makes it so much easier uh, bringing that forward. We had a, uh, a grant from, I'm going to say Governor's Highway Safety, but I'm going to get corrected. State Highway Safety. State, <laughs> State Highway Safety that we found that we had $6,000 nobody knew about. Uh, so we got that money. We utilized that money to buy a handheld radar. We also are getting one of those solar uh, radar signs. The ones that we have now, we have two that are battery operated. And the only problem with that is I'm sure everybody's seen that you know, after a couple of days, the batteries go dead. Mm -hmm. We got to go out, charge them. They're not working. Those are movable. The problem with the solar one is it has to be fixed. So we're looking at posting that out on Route 15 by the inn, where mm -hmm. the other one is. I don't know if anybody has any suggestions of a better place, but it's got to be permanently fixed in some place where there's it good seems sunshine. Like a good spot. Um, yeah. I, I would like, I think that's a good spot. So that frees that, there's one there now. That right? frees that one, and that one can be movable. That's a portable one. That's a portable, that's a portable. So, so I think down, I, I've been thinking about this a lot. Every day I drive to work and I'm going too fast and I come into the village limits and we could put one there and we could put a like by, the water by, the, by the well. Yeah, by the well. Or we could push it further up, Does coming down. Does the speed limit change here? 35. 35. It goes to 30. 30. It, goes it goes to 30. 30 right. By the well, yeah. By the well. So I like that area because we could put a sign up that says, you know, speeding strictly enforced mm -hmm. for, for people coming into Wolcott well, Street. Well, that's right before the first crosswalk. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of like so, don't mean to steal your thumb. No, no, no. The other way I like too, though, where, where that one is, because we can, people do roll. We can get multiple. We can oh, get we can have more than one. No, yeah. we can't. <laughs> well, we can we can't buy afford one. it. But we can buy well, one. it's $4,000 for okay. the solar one. Can't buy another one this year. But. Yeah, right. So the only way we got this is through that grant. Okay. Right. Um, but but we, we've got. I say that that'd be a better for the first one down there. Because that, that one's got to be permanently yeah. fixed. Yeah. And the other ones we can still move around right. wherever right. we want. We move that one down there. They're both good spots so we can figure out. The other thing we have to think about is, uh, you know, in terms of vandalism or theft or something like yeah. that, I think that's a good location, but uh, for one that's going to be there permanently. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do it. Get it done. All right. Well, we, we purchased that one. Good work. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It really likes my hair. <laughs> um, so, I guess that's pretty really much it uh, for now. That's quite a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, um, is there an area where the vehicle thefts were happening? Like a general area in town? Vehicle thefts? Lamoille. This, oh, okay. they, they came out, happening. yeah, they were out of Lamoille. We okay. just happened to find them they were up just here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Uh -huh. um, but I'm sure there's a lot more around here. Yeah. Well, I've seen a lot more action with you guys around so a lot more a lot more it's very nice mm -hmm. very good seeing it all times of day night on the street seeing multiple just like this barely so you know multiple people on duty you guys got a was it a side by side that we were going to get to for the trip for the trail oh i don't know that was i don't think that was very i was pretty skeptical of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think we were going to deputize you and put you in it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the e-bike for the future with the LVRT, yeah, that's great. having that's some e-bikes yeah, for, totally. for responding and even patrolling the rail yeah. track. Yeah. And I did see our last great uh, public police officer in town working again this week, too. Glad it was. Yeah. I thought I saw him. <laughs> yeah, he's working yeah, for the sheriff. He's working for the sheriff a couple of days so a week. I need a double take. He's yeah. greedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, But he did a great job as, as mm -hmm. being in. I was a community police officer. He, yep. was, he, he did an excellent job of that. I was, I was a big part of what he did here that, that was really attractive for him and the development. So. Um, does any, anybody have any update on the communication link to the um, dispatch? At working on the phone line, right? right? I'm, well, I'm working on the phone line. I'm also working on uh, possible another location. It's just, yeah. I. That's a big ticket item. Is it? It could be. It's a, it's a well, long-term payment. Yeah. 
Yeah. It needs to be record. It needs to be yeah, fixed. Yeah, right. We've talked about it. There's no reason why we can't have we a We fixed radio. it a couple of times, you thought, already. And it, yeah, we did. We put money into it. Uh, Burlington Communications keeps saying they're going to come up. They're going to check it again. Yeah. And I'm just not just not getting anywhere with them. But they're, unfortunately, the only game in town right now for that. Okay. I just have another question maybe for our next meeting, Mike, because we, yep. um, I think we mentioned this at a meeting before, but um, we also have, again, on the agenda tonight, um, appointing another police officer. It'd be really great at our next meeting to get, like, some sort of report of where we are with staffing and how the budget's doing with the HPD and yep. just especially, like, with this grant coming yep. in, it'd be nice to just, like, take a look at how, just how the department's doing. Right. It it's a good time of year, too, to... Right. Like well, on that note, we just got uh, one out of the academy, so he just Great. started oh, uh, nice. yesterday That's awesome. for us. But it's a three-month field training program, so it'll be a while before he's on his own. So yeah, but That's through the academy is a big step. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Next is uh, the Hardwick Electric Department report given by Mike Sullivan. Are you still with us, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Can you, can you slide him over and make him big? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me good? Make him big. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me from here? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hold it here for you. What can I grow? Uh, Do you need that? Uh, yeah. Do you need that? 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 Do The H11 is also about 12% over the budget, uh, which is our cheapest source of power right here at Hardwick and uh, on our contract basis. So we're very happy about that. Our LIDAR project, which was the uh, satellite laser imaging of our pole lines in the entire system, uh, which we started last fall, finally got complete uh, because the LiDAR system isn't capable of, obviously isn't capable of seeing through heavy canopies of trees and uh, stuff like that. And also the, the technicians doing that work kind of get off on tangents once in a while and they'll be going down our line and then where the phone line and our line split, they'll go down the wrong line. So all those little errors had to be cleaned up and that took several months, but that's all done now. Uh, and the Northeast Kingdom CUD has all those GIS files and all our pole locations so they can now start all their design and make ready plans and uh, get things rolling on their end. So that was a good thing to get done. Uh, HED's most recent PUC service standards, which is our performance measures by the regulators, which we can be financially penalized for. Uh, we came in excellent, which is a direct uh, uh, bragging right for our crews. The, thing, the three biggest things they measure are lost time accidents, which we had zero. Uh, the next one is outage frequency which we came in 54% better than the requirement. And the third one is outage durations. And we came in 31% better than the requirements on those. So hats off to our crews for that. Um, happy to report that last year's uh, sewer system project for the warehouse, where we've had our temporary sewer facilities as a porta potty in the warehouse, have been completed. We're all tied into the municipal system now, thank goodness. That was a good thing to get done. Uh, purchase power, we are about $160,000 over budget uh, so far this year. And that is due to this past January, February, being the highest winter uh, costs ever reported by ISO New England. So just being off by 1%. Uh, the costs for that energy were about $350 a megawatt hour, where we normally see prices at about $50 a megawatt hour. And 
and we were only covered at about 90%, so we took a hit in January and February on those. Uh, happy to report, though, that we're coming into our best performing months of the year, June, July, August, September, and uh, we're already, the first month of those is coming in at about 15000 under budget. So we'll recover a lot of that, but probably not all of it. But on a $3.6 million budget, we're, we're going to be okay. Uh, year to date revenues are 3.3% over budget, and expenses are running high about 4% over budget. Sorry, expenses uh, are how much is, over? 4%. 4%? Uh, expenses were how much over? 4% uh, over okay. on expenses. Okay. So uh, the commissioners just approved uh, Monday night. The, the, PU, the PUC and the DPS are running a pilot program uh, uh, through VHFA for home improvement, home uh, weatherization projects. and. It's a pretty expansive program that can go to renters or homeowners, um, and it's basically a loan system that HEB can be the administrator for. So they use the the HEB or the utility, not just us. There's there's three of us that are going to participate in the pilot program, and they use our system to be the administrator of the loan. So. Uh, we're going to have some real opportunities for ratepayers in our system to get some good loans and some good rates and uh, do some things you know, with their homes that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So we're pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. And we also, this past Monday night, initiated discussions with a company called DeLorean Power Systems. Um, one of the biggest expenses we're looking at coming down the street for us over the next probably four to eight years is going to be peak uh, capacity costs on the transmission system, which come from ISO New England. And the strategy we're looking at with DeLorean is a, a massive uh, five megawatt battery that they will make all the capital investment in and we pay them a monthly fee to dispatch that battery when necessary, such as yesterday, ISO New England uh, was, ISO New England peaked last evening at about 6 to 6 o'clock p.m. until 7 o'clock p.m. And if we could have had that battery in place uh, for, that, for that event and the subsequent 12 month, uh, 12, each of the 12 month peak events, not just the calendar year event. Uh, such a project could save us about $220,000 a year. All in, all done, after we pay our part, etc. So we're trying to uh, investigate that and, and go down that street. We're really excited about that. We have a couple good locations. And I think that's probably enough to take questions on. Any questions on any of them? Yeah, Mike, I have a quick question. Um, at our last meeting, Nat talked about uh, rates potentially going up. Is there an update yeah. on that? Uh, no, not really. I, I asked Nat to get that on the table with all of you because we are seeing uh, indicators that we're going to have to be looking at a rate increase. You know, Nat metering has been putting pressure on us for the last probably five years. Uh, the purchase power costs, uh, the winter purchase power costs are driving us the last two years. We got hit on those. And we're also looking at uh, one of our biggest uh, purchase power contracts is the Seabrook nuclear plant in New Hampshire. And we replaced half of that contract two years ago with a hydro contract out of Northern Maine, which was great. We got Rex with it and everything really, really got a heck of a deal. And we waited. Uh, VEPSA had all the VEPSA members wait on the second half of replacement because the state of Vermont has not decided and not made a decision about whether nuclear is going to be considered renewable. And if it's not renewable, uh, we don't want it. And the, the price on it is fantastic, but if we're not going to get the wrecks and everything associated with it, it's not a good deal. 
So, depending what we have to land with on that, that will create more rate pressure if we don't end up with a nuclear solution to replace that block of our portfolio. So we have a couple, three big things pushing us. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm sure Nat told you, we haven't had a rate increase since 2009. Yet, every year our labor costs go up. Every year our material costs go up. And, you know, since I've been here, we reduced uh, system losses by over 10%, which was a huge, huge loser that, that helped us, you know, go that long. Uh, we've made many good business decisions that have let us go that long. You know, 2009, I don't think anybody's been as long as us. It's unprecedented. So I asked him to at least broach that with you all and get it you know, out in the public forum where people will at least be aware that, hey, things are starting to brew here and share as much information as we can as early as we can. God, that sounds like a good strategy. <laughs> He uh, said it sounds like a good strategy, Michael. Didn't want to say that too loud. But. Say that again, Dan. <laughs> I said it sounds like a good strategy. I didn't want to say it really loud. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, the, uh, what's the saying I'm trying to think of? Don't know. Change, yeah. that it, change that is well communicated is much better received than change that is not communicated. Yes, so. I agree. Yeah. Yep. And, and costs certainly have risen dramatically since in everyone's yeah, Absolutely. Yep. So it makes a little bit of sense. So. so, yeah, it's not something that's coming down the street next week or anything, but they, things Good. are brewing. So, yep. you know, maybe the end of next year we'll, we'll be looking at something unless things change. And it, and it could. If the legislature decides nuclear is going to be considered renewable or if they consider it uh, maybe a non-carbon and reclassify and include a non-carbon resource uh, with the same benefits, that could work too. And, and all that's in discussion at you know, levels with our lobbyists and stuff that I, I'm not privy to really. Great, thanks Mike. So I, I wonder if you can give us an update on the EV charging stations. I know the project with the co-op, but then the one that you guys were putting at the uh, yep. Yep. I actually just talked to Buffalo Mountain yesterday, and Norwich has not pulled the trigger on any of the options that Brian worked up with. We're ready to go. As soon as they choose one, we, we can do whatever they want. But the last discussion I had yesterday with Buffalo Mountain was that Norwich had told them they're changing gears. And now they want to do something uh, uh, with boring under Route 15 to get to the corner of Buffalo Mountain's parking lot, which is also fine with us. We, we'll, we can accommodate that too. They need to make a decision and you know pay the pay the fee, and we'll do the work. It's not, we're ready to go whenever they make a decision. And the okay. the one. The one that, that potentially was discussed for going at the office, the HED office? That one I'm waiting, waiting on the retaining wall to get replaced because it's going right on the top of that falling over retaining wall behind the office building where we park on the library side. So that corner needs to get rebuilt. The contractor that I hired to do that just did our sewer project and he's about eight weeks behind schedule. So. I'll be happy if we get that wall in there this, you know, this summer before fall. And then as far as the charger goes, that's a couple, three days of work. That'll be done. Great. Isn't that town property? And that'll be a two-car level two Why charger. Why isn't the town involved in the retaining? So it's, you know, a couple, three hours to charge a car up. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, that's me kick you. All right, uh, excellent. Oh, I had one, wait, wait, I got one more thing. Does anybody in the room or on the Zoom know if we have on the calendar a joint uh, Hardwick Electric Commissioner's Select Board meeting? Are we doing a summer, did we say we were gonna do a summer one and a winter one? Or a fall, uh, like or a twice a year, right? Twice a year. Didn't we? Yeah. The last one we did was before January, January, January or February, I think. January, January, yeah. 
Okay. The last one was what? February? January or February. March? February 13th, maybe? Yeah, so it was like September would be. Or October. Yeah, okay. All right, so just bring that up that we should uh, get okay, something. Flip a calendar for me. So we should uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, I'll, I'll put it on our next agenda too to let uh, my board talk about it. Perfect, that's great. Thank you. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right, next up, item number one uh, town clerk slash treasurer. That would be you. That's me. Um, to present the annual financial management questionnaire. So it's the yearly uh, questionnaire required by the state auditors. Uh, only a couple changes this year. They have a new form. We download it right from their website. They took off one question, but they did add a question. Um, do you always provide a numbered receipt for any cash payment made to the town? Which is a yes, so that's a question that's new on there. And then the only other difference, three of the questions, um, the answers were at one point Casey and Alberta, but it's stuff to just Casey does, so we just changed it to her name. And that's the only change on that. Would it be beneficial to, because we just got information about this financial training for yeah. select board members, mm -hmm. would it be helpful for us next year if we, like, I'm planning on attending that, if we communicated, which yes. rather than saying don't know, we could say, Yes, and then would the note be like X number of select board members have done this training? Is that perfect? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so next year um, you'll be like that will be for fiscal year 23, so the answer will be yes. Okay. We, because you're going in July, which is in fiscal year 23. So yeah, it'll be okay. yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. So um, uh, I'll pass this down for you. we just have to sign that we receive here. You do. Yep. So I, I'm assuming, do we need, need a motion to I wouldn't think we would. I don't think I we're thought, not really. I don't know. I thought we always had a motion to approve. Uh, I make a motion we uh, approve the thing. Second. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, aye. If it's written like that, <laughs> yeah, financial management question. Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Questionnaire. <laughs> yes. And today is 21. Okay. Awesome. Next, thank you, Tanya. Oh, you're on the next one too. Uh, you're to present the FY, the fiscal year 23 proposed tax rate, which turns out to be good news, right? It is good news. Do tell. It went down. That's so, amazing. <laughs> um, grand list went up um, 193 million. Um, so increase of 1.9 million. Uh, let's see, state aid highway, we got a little bit more this year for that. Uh, education tax rate went down. What? Well, I don't know. Yeah, how'd and that happen? Because there's a surplus in education. Yeah. Down. You know that? Because there's what? There's a surplus in education. <laughs> really? Oh, People plan those a lot. Huh. I'm not keeping up. All right. And then, and then fund balance <laughs> contribution. The what? The fund balance contribution. Oh, oh right. Yep. So that. If you all agree this evening, we'd put to this year's rate, uh, total municipal rate, 1.3365. That is all good news, right? Can we make a motion? We should, if you would like to. I make a motion that we set the tax rate at, where was that number again? 1.3365. Uh, 1.3365. Oh, it's on the next page. Oh, okay. One point three three six five. Yes. Second that. Uh, any any discussion or questions for? I, I do have yeah. a question about. It always used to be that the non-residential rate mm -hmm. would be higher than the residential rate because mm -hmm. those are the tend to be the second homeowners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how did it happen that we I got upside down? I believe with that? I would have to double check with Alberta because before yeah, we talk, but I think it's related to bond votes. Oh, the oh. library bond, fire yeah. truck bond. I huh. don't. I think it's related to that. I don't I'm think not residents. I'm just curious because I just remember that right. always yeah. being a thing, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, like in the last five or six years, yeah. it's become. I'll double check with her tomorrow and email you, but I'm pretty sure it's related to the bond votes. Okay. Yeah. 
great. Although it looks like it's in the education. Yeah, and the yeah education. education, I think, is they don't pay education, do they? There's yeah, they do. They, some. they do. Yep. They but do. it's different. It's, it's, it's different it's, amount. Yeah, it's different amount. And yeah. The municipal and local agreement are the same. They should be paying the same education rate that I'm paying with no children in the system. Yep. They should be paying it. Yeah, I All right, so we got a okay. Opinions aside, we have a motion on the table to uh, set the tax rate. Um, so what? One. We have, no, you already did the motion. Yeah. Yeah. So, so all in favor of approving the tax rate at one point three three six five, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. <laughs> um, Next up, it's not Tanya. Uh, next up is item three, select board to review coin drop requests for 2023 and to make selections. I move that we accept the list as presented from May, June, July, August, September, leading October open. Second. At uh, this time. Any discussion? Uh, can I take on that? Yes. That would be the time. Okay. Um, I know that, uh, the food pantry reached out, uh, Heather Davis, and inquired about um, a coin drop. I don't think she realized it was, we have the schedule so far out, so we could potentially fill that spot. Let's do with, it, food pantry in October. Okay. So Without them knowing. Yep. She they also don't want, is new to the position. They can, yeah. They yeah, can, they do, they they can change it. it. Yeah, yeah. if they want to do it, then we don't have to. Okay. Yeah. So we're penciling them in, or we're actually pen, Writing them in in ink. Yeah. Um, in October. And so somebody's going to amend the motion. motion to food, the food pantry for October. And uh, on the amendment, do we have a second? Second. All in favor of the amendment adding the food pantry, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So that's amending the original motion. So all in favor of approving the list, which now has been amended to include the food pantry, please say aye. 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 Opposed. That was very good. Motion, good job. motion carries. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that is excellent. Thank you. Item four: Select board to review and approve purchase of a 2022 Ford Police Interceptor for thirty-four thousand four hundred thirty-four dollars and thirty-five cents plus fit up. This is, is this the one we talked about? This is the second one. This is the second, second one. one. This is the one where Danny said, can we just get two before? And yeah. you said, no, because it needs to be in the next fiscal <laughs> yes. year. So, right. um, correct. So now. this, um, we, the 2017 was the one, it was this um, sedan we just replaced. This will be replacing the 2018. Um, I do just want to make one note, which is that we have not been able to sell the 2017 car yet. Um, we have made some efforts, put out a request for like bids, sealed bids on it, did not get any bites. Um, we're going to try a couple other avenues. Our plan is to have you ideally approve the purchase, but we don't want to do it until we sell at least the 2017 car to get rid of that, um, or we and may. trading is not an option? Well, we're gonna try that too. Oh, okay. And if so, if so, we're gonna trade the 17 um, for this one, and then try to sell the 18. Well, yeah, okay. we'll figure it out. But we're, ultimately, we're gonna sell at least one of those <coughs> and deposit that cash and capital before we make this purchase. Okay. So, so you need us to approve this, kind of go ahead with that process? Yeah, and just but just so you know, we are going to wait right. until yeah. we sell them yeah. and, or trade it. And do we? Uh, and that relates to our budgeted amount. Uh, yeah, we actually have forty budgeted. Okay. So, however, there is funds left over from prior years in the cruiser um, because of the sale of the K nine, and that went yeah. into that fund. So yeah. yes, there, there's so added the funds. Up, so. Yeah. Right. So, but with because the up, fit up good. runs we're into good, ten. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah. And we saved money last time. Right. We ended up purchasing some used equipment <coughs> to put in. So we saved a couple thousand there. So Yeah. We, actually, more than that, I think we saved probably about 6,000. Well, total. the whole new radio. The whole, but I, I've been looking, and I, I can't find the same stuff this time. It was just... That's the used market. Lost. So we yeah, need a yeah. motion to yeah. have the <coughs> process laid out to us by Casey. So moved. Uh, Write it up, Casey. <laughs> All right. So, um, any more discussion about that? 
And so now we're good for next year, 24, we don't purchase. It's a year off. It's a year off, right? I think it's a year off, yes. Year off. Yep. Okay. Do you know anybody, or I'll let you do your all, all in favor yep. of uh, approving the purchase of the new police car for $34,434.35, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Do you know anybody who wants to buy an old um, Ford sedan interceptor? <coughs> we got one for sale. What's a book for, Casey? Like eleven? Yeah. What the book's really high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I yeah. take six six thousand or best offer. Oh geez, you're really going low. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we put a bid out for eight thousand and we didn't get any. Well, offer. we we like we didn't really put it out there. Can we get it? That All good. right. Yeah. yeah. So. You guys are going to work on trading one of them, yep. and the rest We're of you guys I'm are. Sick of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's going down the road, went some way. Okay. I think it'll look good in Danny's yard. Yeah. There we go. That's just what I need. Yeah. <laughs> more stuff. Um, more, more John. Item five is uh, Select Board to consider reappointing Roger Prevo on a two year term and Michael Ambrosino on a three year term. As Hardwick Electric Commissioners. And um, I so know. Moved. Their letters were in the full yep. second. All right. Uh, I think they're both uh, making good contributions to the to the yeah. Hardwick Electric um, board. So I would agree. All right. Yeah. We're, thank you for being on top of reappointing commissioners. Somebody was. <laughs> Casey. Somebody. Casey. Sorry. Somebody. I got it on my calendar. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So all in favor of appointing both Roger Prevo and Did Michael. Did we tell? <laughs> <laughs> they I talked to him yesterday. I know. I know. Okay, and Michael Ambrosino, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much to Roger and uh, Michael for doing that it's important work and uh, happy to have you do it. Uh, item six Select Board to appoint Stephen Mitchell III as a Hardwick police officer. So tell us a little about Stephen. So Stephen uh, has got uh, 11 years on the job. He was here. In Hardwick before, went to Lamoille County. Uh, we got him back. We're actually bringing him back as a sergeant here at uh, Hardwick, uh, based on his experience uh, so far. Everything's going pretty good. Okay, we make a motion that we appoint Stephen A. Mitchell III as a. Do we have to say sergeant, or is that your deal? As an officer. As an officer. Yeah. That's all we do, right? Yeah, that's yeah. our that's our whole thing. Second. Any more discussion or questions? Just really quickly, he's on level three. three. Great. Thanks, three, Mark. so that could give you the numbers on that if you want after. No, that's, I was I just hoping for level three. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's going to give us we three. Two additional yeah. level threes. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Three level threes plus. Including you. Including, plus no, me. Plus, plus you. Yeah. Plus, yes. Oh, so four. So four total. Yes. That's good. Job. That's good. Wow. Moving um, along. Yeah. Good. All right. Good. So we have a motion on the table to appoint um, Stephen Mitchell. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So motion carries. Thank you very much. And thanks to uh, Mr. Mitchell for coming back and coming back. Yes. Yeah. Joining us again. All right. So next is item seven. Uh, Jessica Bickford from Healthy Lamoille Valley. I just oh, she gonna join us on I thing? just emailed her. So we we could come back to her. We're uh, running a little ahead of schedule. We are? Yeah. All of a sudden. We were behind. Um, I would say <laughs> you could go down to item nine, cross that off. I wouldn't skip too far. I'd uh, like to uh, motion that we appoint Kate Brook to the DRB for a three year term. Second. Uh, any discussion? I just say Kate has been serving on the DRB and has submitted a letter of interest to continue. And uh, do we still have? Oh wait, so let's vote first. Yep. So all in favor um, of appointing Kate Brook back under the DRB, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, Kate. Um, do we still have openings on the DRB? I think there's still one. Is there more one? And two there's one on the plan. And two. And one on planning. Yeah. There's one. Okay. It's one on play. We still do have room. People want to play. <laughs> yeah. So. And like a full energy committee. Yeah. Right in the yes. energy committee we need. Uh, so there are opportunities for people to become involved in their community. 
Um, all right. Next, uh, do we have folks from NEK Bent or Northeast Bent yeah, here? here? You guys are here? Awesome. So we're going to go to that next. Uh, these guys are here to talk about a vision for developing the Cary Road property. Uh, item 10. There's two big items. Item 10. Yes. Uh, what do we do? Stand up? Go <laughs> yeah. somewhere? We stand up. Stand up from here. Um, can you put their... Yeah. The courts, don't and introduce yourselves. Yeah. And then... Uh, do you matter where I stand? No. <laughs> On your mark? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Where, where, wherever you're comfortable. Oh. The left is better for me. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom. Josh Oakley, I live in Waterford, just down the street from Jesse. He grew up in Hardwick. He's friends with David and I guess Opie and a lot of know a lot of people here. So we're I got dragged into this because the hospital um, in DRH has a massive housing problem. They can't hire people, they can't retain people. I'm sure you guys might have experienced this as well. So um, we started working on a solution for that. It's a little background that gets you to where we are today. And um, developed a, a prototype of a prefabricated housing unit that we are now um, working on multiple sites around St. Johnsbury. Uh, Waterford's, I mean, you guys know where Waterford is, okay? So we're 10 minutes from St. J. That leads us to Cary Road. We're talking to, I think, David one day, and he mentions this property in Cary Road. And what we're interested in are what we consider edge sites. So sites that aren't in the middle of a 300-acre horse farm, but they're also not in the middle of downtown they're kind of between downtown and horse farm, however you want to describe it, right? Because everybody's afraid of this bucolic Vermont vision going away if we build new homes. And I'm generalizing here a little bit. And so when we saw Cary Road, we said, hey, this is exactly what we're doing in St. J. Um, can, we, can we pitch it to the select board and kind of share our vision? So that's what we're doing. Um, and so uh, this is Cary Road. Can I control the slides? or? Can we go through them real quick? Can we'll you just, just tell me where, yeah, yeah just, computer, so just yeah, tell just me where you want to be. Next slide. It's all good. Um, what we did is we just quickly, this is not one that's really important, <laughs> but uh, it's a joke. Um, we, we took the site quickly and said, hey, you got about eight acres. If you go to the next slide, it, it has some features to it, right? You've got the Dollar General that was recently developed, but you also have frontage, so you have these, these this pad that's there, you have this frontage on a major highway, and then tucked back in there, you have this existing home along, you know, a future uh, rail trail uh, oh, site, right? Existing rail trail. Existing rail trail. Um, yeah. Yes, existing rail trail. Sorry, it's right. getting my dates missing. So, go to the next one, please. Thank you. So this is kind of how, again, this is very early. This is us not talking to anybody, just saying, hey, this. let's just share a vision, right? Yeah. And our vision was, you come in, you kind of take this seven to eight acres and you start to parse out these residential or commercial uh, sites that you can then add some single family type homes, market rate homes. Um, to mute. It's okay. She's working with her dog. Whoever's on Zoom, can you, can you mute? Please. Please. This is incredibly important. <laughs> well, um, it, right then, now it is. Yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then we go to, you know, Let's, let's cooperate with the rail trail and make green space, right, continue to the back of the site and just kind of enhance that rail trail. So you can go to the next one, please. Um, there's only a few more, so I won't, I won't make you go through all of them. And then we just said, hey, with no, uh, not a lot of uh, work and not a lot of analysis, we can just show a medium density type layout where these are not big apartment buildings. These are homes, like single family homes. You could do duplexes or multifamily, but our, our strategy is to use single family homes that um, are not affordable housing. This would be market rate, which I, I'm not going to get off on this. That actually is affordable housing right now because people can't afford market rate. You all know where I'm going there. So these would be um, 
small, maybe uh, 16 to 2400 square foot homes, and you could uh, put, you know, 6, 10, 12, however many you want to put on a site like this, and activate what is a large parcel next to a rail trail, next to a new development, you could potentially try, you know, you could potentially try to maybe see if you could get this owner into one of these new homes and have help clean up that side as well. Again, I'm reaching here, okay? Mm -hmm. Like a developer would. But that now cleans up that entire slice, okay? And so that's, when we saw that, and that this is what we're doing in St. Jay, or working on sites just like this in St. Jay, we said, hey, let's pitch this to the board and just say, hey, our ask is, are you interested in something like this, in a conversation like this? We, we don't know how it would work with Hardwick, you know what I mean? Um, but we're, we're doing this, and we're pretty excited about it, and we think there's a huge need for market rate housing, right? We've, we've got a great affordable rate housing people working already in all these communities, but I think we need more market rate. Um, so I'll just kind of stop it there. I sent some other slides, but I'm sure you have some questions. Yeah. What this community really needs that I'm particularly sensitive to yes. is single level housing. So scroll yes. down. Yes. There are an awful lot of geriatric folks whose yes. who's yes. old houses with the staircase. Yes. Yeah. Are really difficult for yeah. them. Yeah. Yes. Any any thought of including that? It, I don't have a thought one way or the other. Meaning that's easier to build. It's, yeah. it's easier to build a slab on grade home, right? That's a single story home. Um, that is absolutely the biggest. I think probably the biggest comment we get in St. Jay is we have people that are selling their family farm. They don't want to leave the area or they're selling their home with some land and they want to stay here, but it's not assisted living, but they need something that is accessible. So definitely something we, we experience. Yeah. So the missing middle. Yeah. 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 Um, yes. Back when uh, the Dollar General was going in there, there was a lot of discussion about the wetland. I assume you've heard about that, and yeah, that this would deal with it in a, in a, in a yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and yeah. that property's not part of the sewer, at water and sewer, is it? So we'd have to have some infrastructure. Well, water it's right there. Close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. 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 It looks like there's some wetlands. I don't directly on the right side or the yep. slide. This yeah, outside. Further south. Yeah. It yeah. kind of yeah. comes yeah. down on the other side of the slab. Yeah. The the parcel between the Dollar General and the slab. It looks like maybe fill from the, some site was dumped there or something. No, it's uh, sandy. It's just natural oh, sand. Is that just natural sand? Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. but it looked like you could grade that. So I, I like the idea, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I think as a town, we have a lot of projects that we need to concentrate this on. This is not, this, we don't want this project. No, no. So is he right? A, you write a check? <laughs> yeah, I'll buy it for what you bought it for. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, that's not really how things work in America, yeah. just so you know. They do in towns that want housing. I'll buy it for yeah. what we got into. <laughs> so you're going to put houses there? Uh, yeah. I'll put whatever you want. You so know I, I, I did go through your um, slide deck before, and one thing that struck me is I didn't see any reference to energy efficiency. So yeah. maybe you could just speak to that a little yeah. bit. Um, yes. Uh, what, what we're what we're developing is a CLT. I don't know if you know anything about mass timber, but it's yeah. a cross laminated timber yeah. panelized structure. Based, I don't want to. It's a long conversation. I'm happy to give you guys all the details, but it's based on a barn that's kingdom bent, a barn bent layout. Yeah. Um, we don't know how we're going to use solar yet. Uh, we've talked to people in multiple spots. We've talked about grants. We've talked to the Vermont people. Yes, it, it, the idea is that it's a passive house. That it's zero. Now, this is early. We're probably two years out from having people live in this house, which in Vermont, once you go through permitting, that's actually not that long, you know what I mean? But we're still early in how we're going to get all that you know, figured yeah. out. So I don't, I don't want to. So just to boil it down, you're yes. asking for us to consider selling you the Cary Road property. If that's how this would work, yes. Okay. We're saying, are you interested? And if so, what do you need from us or what would you want from us? to take a next step. It sounds like the board probably needs to have a conversation about the future of the carry, carry road in general, which we've been kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're coming up to that time. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then the, one of the um, yes. slides at some point yes. showed 
uh, housing in the back where the house is now, but potentially a uh, more commercial, commercial building on the Yeah, so I showed a different option where the, yeah. the sites on the highway, yeah. if you had a commercial tenant or use that the town would want there, you could split those off yeah. and tuck residential behind. Which, right, like for instance, if it turned out that that was a site that Rescue was particularly interested in. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Just throwing that out there because they've been they're they're actively looking for more space. Anyway, I got nine nice acres right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, we're good for this. Actually, yeah, you're, you're right on the edge too. Uh, he's got the same. Yeah, we should do it both places. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think we should. Yeah. Continue the conversation. Sure. Yeah. You know, sure. I, I mean, I'm it's sure. early. There's a lot yeah. we want to know. So I just we just want to introduce her and just say, hey, no, it's great. Interested in the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, just a timing question for yes, you. I mean, two years is not that much time. So, what is your hope in terms of hearing from us? Because that would, I think would help us in having a conversation about it. Like, are you hoping to hear, have a conversation with us in the next couple months? So that way you know maybe we're interested, maybe not. Like, what, what's the timing that you're hoping for? Yes, as soon as reasonably possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the so one that's that shows, go down a little bit. Yeah. That's the one that shows a potential commercial yeah. instead of, uh, right? So that's another possibility. Yeah. <clears throat> or it could be, those are both commercial in that one, but one could be commercial yes. and the other could yes. be residential. Totally. Yep. And you could add density in here. It, there's some gray, right? So it gets yeah. expensive, but we're shooting for not a high density deal, right? This is not about packing as much as we can. It's about getting some density, but making it a nice place to live. You yeah. know, right. It's like, it's not an apartment complex, yeah. it's, but it's not a neighborhood. It's kind of a nice winding place that's right next to a rail trail with nature. So yeah. I think you all get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we all express our thoughts on being landlords mm -hmm. or property owners. <laughs> oh, the, as a town. Or developers or whatever. Yeah, as a town we're not. Yeah. We did buy this. Yeah, we're we not. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, there was some discussion about having, being able to expand the industrial space. So yes, we need to right. talk about that. And, and you know the state just allocated a lot of funds for the missing middle. Housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, the missing middle. Yeah, Absolutely. there's some opportunity here too to leverage that. And this this would all be part of the grand list. Mm -hmm. I understand. If we own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we're no, not no. in the housing town. Yeah, yeah. No, no, should I've not never be in the housing been supported of plus owning that. Yeah. I, I always have supported it being right. like industry. For jobs, but that could be on 14 as well as retail and right. Yeah, five six houses would be the place where the people live. So yeah, yeah, it's an interesting concept. It, it wouldn't have to necessarily be retail. It could be like industrial no. on, on yep. the yep. road. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That I would certainly support with housing available. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I just agree. one other quick question: yes. Are there? Are, I assume there's some projects in St. John's Bay Waterford that are moving ahead with this process like they're going for it or you're still farther ahead than you're us. still feeling god he hopes somebody <laughs> does pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the magic question so similar similar we're further along in st j okay. uh working with joe casper zach assistant yeah. town manager um we just bought the church in lower waterford uh which is a different kind of deal but um we're you know very interested in properties that either people don't want their edge properties the church in Waterford, the congregation was down to two people, and the building was, it's a historic building, it's beautiful, it, no one was in it, so it's going into disrepair. So we came in and said, hey, we can turn this into, you know, something for community use or housing. Um, in St. J, there's a neighborhood called Somerville, and I can send you all this information, but we're working on about three or four sites like this. Okay. And they're edge sites. Okay. They're in town. Sewer and water are important, right, for cost. Yeah. And so they're in town, but they're on the edge. One of them is Brownfield, so there's a cleanup issue there. But yeah, well, this is the part where it's some information. Yes. I mean, we're, I'm interested in learning yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would yeah. like to see something yeah. done with that. Yeah. And something that adds to the grand list, and as soon as we can. Provide, uh, a, a Great. So maybe we can just make it an agenda item for our next meeting to have a conversation about Cary Road in general. Sure. Yeah. So I would just ask if you, then you can guys can say to us, hey, here's what we would like. And then just be honest with us, like if we're going to go put a bunch of time and energy into it, there we're not asking you to say yes, we're going to do it, but you know we're not going to then turn around and say, hey everybody else, you all want to do it too, 
We want to know that in front. Yeah. That yeah. makes sure. sense. That's a good idea. I guess we'll do it ourselves. Yes. <laughs> we are we not. Hey, yeah. Yeah. our town manager is very professional. He would never do that. Yes, he's ethical. And somebody needs to do it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so it's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, yeah. In, it's in this. We need it. No, I set. think we should look great at it for thank sure. You. Thank you guys. Cool. It was, it was yep. a great packet. Thank you. Thank you. And thank yep. you for being uh, yep. concise. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Appreciate it. Well, the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> thank you. All right. Awesome. So. Oh, yeah. Well, um, that was better than I thought it was going to be. Jessica's here. Jessica's here? You never, you never know. Oh, okay. Jessica. All right. So we're going to go back up. We're re going back up to items. We're going to hit item seven and then item eight after that. So item seven, we have Jessica Bickford on the amazing Zoom to talk about, uh, from Healthy Lamoille Valley, um, to talk about uh, cannabis control boards uh, and how they function in a town, I think, right? Exactly, yep. So you, go ahead, tell us, tell us about it. So I'm Jessica Bickford, I'm the coordinator of Healthy Lamoille Valley, and we are a substance prevention coalition. Um, typically, Allison Link, our policy and community outreach coordinator, would come to these, but she's out of town on a family vacation. Um, and just with the timeliness of cannabis control commissions, um, as Hardwick opted into cannabis retail. Um, Allison has been working with... Um, planners from around the state as well as prevention colleagues and created the document uh, that's in your packet, which is a snapshot of the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, and, and Hardwick, is, it's really awesome because you all are really engaged in this process. And one of the things that um, a, a Cannabis Control Commission, which we call CCC, which is, is the local board, and then there's the, the state board, which is the Cannabis Control Board. So they're the CCB you had the opportunity to set up a CCC. Um, and there's a few benefits to this. Um, and this um, sheet that you all have in your packet really does outline that. Um, but just to kind of go through, um, having a local cannabis control commission, it's a really timely process. If you're going to set one up, you want to set it up before retail um, starts in October. So that way you can kind of get it situated outline what um, you're charging them with um, and, and go forth. Um, there's a couple of things, uh, ways you can do it. Um, one is it could be like your local liquor board that you as a select board decide to just take that on. Um, the other option is that you appoint a cannabis control board and we really recommend that this is a group of diverse stakeholders so that you would have somebody from your local government, possibly somebody from your school district, law enforcement, youth, parents, uh, somebody from prevention, recovery programs, commerce, somebody from the cannabis industry, and healthcare. So they can kind of look at all sides of this issue. Um, and really, there's a couple of benefits of having a cannabis control commission. Um, one is if you do not, um, the state will just issue licenses, and it won't necessarily go through the town. So you'll just have businesses popping up. Um, and while the state is well intentioned to check in with your zoning, it may or may not happen. That's yet to be seen. Um, so it's possible you might get somebody in a section that's not zoned, you know, commercial. Like, so you really want to, this gives you the opportunity to kind of be the first step of licensing. So you know how many businesses you have coming in and that, that sort of thing. Um, the other thing um, that having a local CCC allows you to do um, is really kind of to look at criteria for licensing. So you all could put in like, you know, certain hours, lighting, a criteria for renewal process, um, or a process if somebody's out of compliance. So if they fail a, a compliance check, you know, we see that occasionally with our tobacco and alcohol retailers, somebody underage comes in, they buy, you know, and they, you know, the, the Department of Liquor and Lottery, in that case, you know, gives them a fine. Um, and then you as the uh, local liquor board can say, oh, you know, how many fines do we want a business to have before we decide that we might not want to have them have a license? So a cannabis control commission would give you that level of control. So if you had somebody that was routinely out of compliance, um, you could do something about it. Um, 
They can also um, make other recommendations, you know, related to your zoning ordinances. Um, they, they can also do, you know, if you have sign ordinances or nuisance ordinances. So if a business, you know, starts to have a lot of like, you know, I think common things we hear are noise, you know, s smell of the plants, that sort of thing. So that board could kind of be the first step to kind of problem solve with you all as a community and with the business. Um, you know, the, the board could also do some data collection. You know, there's different things that that Cannabis Control Commission locally could do. Um, you know, you already have zoning, so they would basically could check in before, uh, you know, a license was issued and, you know, make sure it complies with the zoning that you have in Hardwick. Um, you know, there's, this is still an evolving, you know, market um, and retail space. Um, so the Cannabis Control Board is still evolving um, and, and their um, requirements and such are still evolving. So um, if you set up a Cannabis Control Commission, you would definitely want to check in, you know, just with, you know, what, what changes have gone, you know, come out um, since this document was accurate. Um, as of this week, uh, but things continue to evolve. So you'll, you would want to just check in and make sure that things are still accurate. And we're going to try to stay on top of that as well. Um, so that's um, a little bit about it. Um, a CCC is, um, as with any town board, would fall under open meeting laws. And so those minutes and such would need to be, be open and posted and, and such. So. I think that's really it in a nutshell. Um, I'll try to answer what questions I can. Um, and if I can't, I will write them down and Allison will be back on August 1st. So we should be able to get you um, answers for your next meeting. Great, thank you. Um, folks have questions for Jessica? We did have a group that worked on um, putting together information for town meeting. Yeah, that's that was just a... It was like a task force. Yeah. So the question here is, are we going to, to create one of these create things? One that we're yeah. About yeah. We're talking about that. We're talking about that. Well, I think we're talking about that there is an opportunity to create this. Well, I think it's important that if we don't yeah. create this. You kind of at the mercy right. of the state we're, and we're, our local zoning. Right. right. And our local zoning is pretty clear on this. I mean, we, the Planning Commission's talked about this a lot. Kristen's on, on top of what the rules are for where they potentially could be right. placed. But those rules are laid out by the state. But it's also well, we have our also local our yeah our zoning bylaws. Our are zoning local. bylaws specifically don't allow for cannabis for resale? Cannibal no, just cannabis retail. Resale. No cannibals. No <laughs> cannabis re resale cannibal. in uh, in within five hundred feet of a school. So that means most of downtown is not gonna Potentially be right. I'm just um, so it would so need is that to something be, we change the zoning? On top of zoning it. or that's so a state? state that, uh, there's hardwood zoning that's in play. Yeah. In, in both and um, what what I and it goes with the state. The, yeah. the plus about the cannabis control commission is that the enforcement piece, mm -hmm. like we can revoke a we can revoke a license. Right. I I don't think we want to be involved in this without having some local control, do we? Right. So. Right, I wouldn't think so. So I don't think people. Right. Are you picking up so, on? Are you? Are, can so you hear us? Steve, Steve Fordman is. We'd love to join our you. audience. I imagine you're here for this. Do you? Do you wanna? <laughs> no, I just uh, I got an email from Jess Nelson to be here and on the system, so I just want I wanted to hear the conversation. Yeah. Um, so I, I think yeah. it'd be better to have a, a local commission versus not having any. I, I don't know a lot about the state cannabis right. control board, but it, it would seem like um, from what Jess said that you're defaulting a lot of decisions to them yeah and, and a lot of control that so might, says, may or may not be things that are important to the town or to the select board um, but it sounds like pretty good advice to at least explore this and set it up um, and, and they're still they're issuing I believe they're issuing licenses without any of um, their guidelines cemented in place am I am I Right on that, Jessica? Yeah, yeah. I believe they have started issuing licenses, so that's why this becomes a timely, yeah. a timely uh, discussion. Yeah. Um, I know that Johnson did vote to put in a CCC, um, and I haven't. I don't know if Morrisville has. Um, I would suspect that they have. Um, 
and I can certainly confirm that. But that's why this is a timely conversation, is because the longer you have, the more chance that they are issued licenses and you don't know necessarily what's coming into town. So I'd like to motion that we, I don't know if we need a motion, but I think we should um, put together a CCC for the town of Hardwick and get as many key stakeholders to participate as possible. Steve, I don't know if you want to volunteer to be a part of this. Yeah, <laughs> Details to be worked out. <laughs> Details to be worked out. I mean. Well, I, yeah, so we could we could definitely reach out to some of the folks that um, Jessica listed. So like healthcare. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to ask all of them, but but there are. Well, yeah. Okay. School. Oh, yeah. That's two extra. Like like yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think the principal of the school needs schools. Yeah, I don't want to. Contact him and see if he has somebody in mind yeah. to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, I think I think we could find so a deck to make sure it's done right. Or commission. Yeah. So should so okay. could is it so the the trouble is that the time like if the state's already issuing licenses. Right. Well, well if we form a commission, they can't. They says here that if we've got one, yeah. that, that they can't do it, but we have a. So, so, we, so we could have a motion tonight that we're going to form a commission. Mm -hmm. We could we could resolve that we're going to form a commission, and then next time maybe our next right. meeting we have a slate well, of people. We, we, we could actually fill it. We should get a slate of people to come in. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be great if Allison was available for that meeting, Jessica, so that way she could help maybe guide us in some of. Right. I would just think we're going to have to have an organizational meeting here. Yeah. 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 We're doing yeah. So. I think we need to because I whatever. this whole thing of it does not form a local commission. The state CCB right. will issue licenses before notifying the town. And I, and I know that Kristen have Don't Kristen has that. gotten mm -hmm. permits mm -hmm. for this, yeah. and they do not. They are within compliance with our bylaws, so the permits have been issued. Yeah. Great. The but zoning permit. Correct. Yes, but if we form this thing, then the license will need to be come through. We'll have to have a local license as well. It sounds like right. prior to it, right. the town, the CCC, the CCB will require that the local <coughs> CCC issues its license before issuing a state cannabis license. Yeah. So, yeah. so Kim's yeah. made a motion. Yes. So is, is October a new date? Mm. October is when retail stores can open. Okay. Yeah. So, so they, they can start putting their everything into place, but they, right. they can't open before October 1st. But a license can be issued at any time. I believe licenses <coughs> can be issued um, I, as early as April for those that were trying to remember. Um, I think April was the date if like somebody was already like a dispensary, which I don't think we have any in that in our area, and I think it was a date this summer. I will check on that and can get back to it, you. Um, it, was, it was April, uh, so for the early, like people submitted applications and then they were, they were accepted. Yeah. Um, I think, I, yeah. Kristen has either received growing, per, like there's a difference, there's yeah. a growing yeah. in the retail right. yeah. or something. Well, I, think she has <coughs> I know. I can't say, I don't know exactly. Exactly. Built, so. So it's, but anyway, the, the point is it's happening. Yeah. And, yes. And if we want to have um, any control so over it, we, we need to get started. Yes. Yes. establish this board. So there is a motion on the table, and with I second. And I second it. With second. All right. Just to, to, to <laughs> that we are going to establish this yep. commission. So right. we resolve to establish the CCC. Yeah. Yep. Bam. All right. So all in favor of uh, establishing the CCC, please say aye. 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 There's aye. a question. Oh. Je Jessica has a question too. So it, it, it's more of a, a, a process oh. comment. So now that you have voted in favor of having a, a CCC, I would have somebody from your board reach out to the, the Cannabis Control Board and let them know that this was a, a vote in the affirmative and that, that at your next meeting you'll be you know deciding who's on that. So you can just start the ball rolling um, and that they can record um, that process. So. Excellent. Mr. Yeah. Upson's on it. We've got our best man on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thanks. Know, well, All right. Thanks. <laughs> Allison will reach out for Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. All right. Next up, we're, we're kind of bouncing around our agenda tonight, but item number eight is Two Divine Library Chair Jody Lou Smith is here to discuss uh, the idea of a bridge loan to fund the gap in the expansion project of the library. 
and um, has uh, the board to, has also to discuss allocating the remaining 48,000 of the ARPA funds to the library. So, Joey, can you give us just the, well, you can give us whatever you're, you're here to give us, but if you, uh, I'm, I think I'm especially interested in just hearing like the, where, where are the fundings at right now? Yeah. Um, so it's in the progress report. Um, we opened the bids in the, almost exactly a month ago on June 23rd. The low bidder was EF Wall at three million twenty-five thousand. Um, our construction budget was two point one four five million. So we um, have on paper a gap of nine hundred and forty thousand. Um, the things that we are doing to address the gap at this point are um, we are negotiating with the contractor, who is the low bidder, to see if they can improve their numbers. They seem willing to discuss it. Um, we haven't heard back from them, but um, our owner's representative was scheduled to talk to them by phone this week. So we're hoping that will help. Um, and then our major potential source of funding um, is the De Vermont Department of Libraries um, Public Capital Fund project, which I sent you, the, you guys saw that, okay. Yeah. I sent you the timeline that we just received from the new state library. And so basically, the money has been secured, so the fact that she gave us an update means that it's, they got the money. Um, they have to, Give a, um, they have to, by September, they have to come up with a plan for allocating it, and then the, we'll start taking applications after the year. Um, in that same pot of money, it's a little later on my list here, um, there could be another $10 million coming through an earmark from Senator Laney's office because he's had so many requests from the libraries. He decided to put another into the library capital fund that's already existed. And would that be in the upcoming federal budget? Like he's put yes. that in? This so this year's whenever, federal yeah. budget. So if it was the same timing as this year, it would get passed in March. And get right, you get passed in March. But it's supposed to get passed in like October. They just haven't oh, yeah. done that apparently. Since but apparently that never happens. Right. Right. Okay, so... Um, then, um, so that is the basis for suggesting that we, um, it might be a suitable, a suitable creative solution that we um, would find a bridge loan that would allow us to borrow or, or set up a line of credit with a local bank that is based on the expectation of grant funds. Um, I forgot to mention that I've had two conversations already with the, state, like the deputy state librarian who's in charge of allocating grants and talked through with her our project, our situation, blah, blah, blah. She indicated that we were really an exquisite fit for what they want. They want to fund accessibility. They want to fund reap zones. They want to fund um, shovel-ready projects. They want to fund projects with matching funds. So we fit their bill better than, you know, people way back in the process would be able to. Um, they haven't yet set a cap. Um, so I'm assuming that a cap of 500 is a doable, is a, is a reasonable number. It's the number that um, I've seen other granting sources use. So that's where that number has come from. It's really a guesstimate. Um, and so we have some other funds that we're looking, some other grant sources and other ones will come up to fill the rest of the gap, including potentially this the portion of the ARPA funds. Um, but my question for the board is really, um, so it would have to, it would, it would I, so the bank we're talking to is Community National Bank of Barton Derby and Newport, that bank. They, um, talked to, spoke to their lawyers who said it was reasonable that we could have co-signers on a bridge loan, on a loan, a municipal loan, um, 
and our idea was that the co-signers would be first in line if, to take the risk if for some reason the grant funding didn't come through rather than the taxpayers. So my question for the board was what would, what would the board need to feel comfortable that the risk wasn't going to fall on the taxpayers? Sorry, would it be possible to pull up that um, the numbers that Jody gave us the, in that the board folder, the um, Excel, Excel sheet? sheet. That spreadsheet. The Excel sheet. Oh, the budget. Okay. Yeah, if there's just, I'm just trying to look at yeah. all the information. <laughs> okay, it's a lot. <laughs> it's an awful lot. Yeah. And it's you've been a miracle worker pulling together all the puzzle pieces. <laughs> it's really. Astounding. Um, but this is the this is the budget. It doesn't necessarily have some of these other pieces that you just mentioned, right? Like it doesn't no. have the, the state grant necessarily. Well the state grant would be essentially funding the bridge loan. Okay. So it's on there as a separate line. It would be the idea would be, and they did give us, she did give me the indication that we would still be allowed to apply and that and I, we would let them know right away if we were going to do a bridge loan, that we were doing that to save the project, but we were expecting to apply. Okay. Um, so, so that's grants expected line, that second yellow okay. line at the bottom. Okay, so that's a part of the grants expected, and then there's the... Is, is the Community National Bank bridge loan also grants expected? That, that is the same line because okay. the bridge loan would float us until that grant potentially came through. That grant could be more than 500. It could be less. We don't exactly know. It is a pretty big pot of money, though, and there's potentially more behind it. So I don't, we don't know exactly. And then there are some other sources of grant money that we could possibly apply for if that one came, one came up short. However, there is still a $440,000 gap that um, that number's gone down slightly because we had a, we got new numbers from Casey and I have a more updated version of this. It's, it's about the same. Um, and so that $440,000 number is where we're hoping EF Wall will come down. We're hoping we can um, find another source of donation, grant, um, we're not sure, really. But relative to the size of the project, that number is not, as, not that big anymore. Um, so we've been really upfront with EF Wall that this was a really big gap and we're working our best and they heard us that we would really like to keep the project afloat and we're doing our best to fill that gap. Did you have a number in mind that you would like for us to think about? Is it that 400000 um, for the loan? Yeah. She's going to be a loan for nine. Loan for 500000 Five. It's got to be 900000 nine Well, sure. 940 I'm uncomfortable with making that loan too big, unless, uncomfortable I mean, we have that option. Oh, honestly, <laughs> I'll be honest. What? I said, I'm uncomfortable with a loan at all. Yeah, I hear you. And I, um, I, I do have a question about the loan. Like, the town has a line of credit through Union Bay, which we approve every year, we never use, but why would Community National give a better deal than Union Bank? Well, when they're not located in this area. Well, they're very community focused. So I know they are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And they are Northeast Kingdom. Right. Particularly. Yeah. Right in the middle of more so. Yeah. 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 Newport. So we are in their so, region. So, I mean, the thing that comes to mind to me is that as a as a municipality where we have certain procedures we have to follow for borrowing, usually it's a town vote. Mm -hmm. So that's why... But we, but we just, for the sewer project, we just upped that bond because there's a 
threshold, there's a percentage threshold that we do not need a vote on. Yep. Right. Yeah, but it's a pretty small We're percentage. Right, it's, it's 2%. The voters already approved the bond. Right, the bond. Right. Right. Yeah, so the bond is just like 3% back. Yeah, there were a couple of failed bonds in the library that were too large. Okay. All right. Okay. I can do it. I think it's been sure. just gone exponentially ever since. So this, this is, we reached out to I Bill Davies, or Casey reached out to Bill Davies, and he explained how this would go if we, if you authorized a bridge loan and the, the, the funds didn't come through. Mm -hmm. So therefore we, somebody would be. So the statute was really designed for the lender because the lender is taking all of the risks because let's say the grants don't come through after a year. Well, at that point it has to go to a town vote. If the voters say no, then the lender has to then figure out how they're going to get paid. And he said at that point, usually it becomes, you know, a matter of working it out to pay it off over a period of time. Um, but the statute's really all about the yeah, lender is taking the risk. At that point, we have a bad debt. And usually um, the lender is communicating with the, um, with the grants yeah. to sort of, so that they can feel comfortable that these are going to come through. Like if you did it as a borrowing in anticipation of grants for a term of one year or less, the statute says you could do that without going to the voters, but then... So, um, since we have a primary vote coming on August 9th mm -hmm. in two weeks, uh, like, can, is this something that we could add to... Uh, no. <laughs> to, no, it's too late. As a separate warning, Australian... Warning, warning. Like, warning. It's too late for warning. Yeah, it's too late. Warning. Yeah, it's too late. It's to be out. We had to hang those three days before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd be 30 30 days before. Yeah. yeah. Could, could you do it in the, there's an, another. We do a special town November. meeting. November. Yeah, yeah, November. You do the November election. Right? I mean, I, I for one would like to hear from the whole town on it because it's, it's a thing yeah, that right. we, I'm it's not, unprecedented. Yeah. I think it's tough to, I don't know. Well, that would provide us some time to figure out how to ask that. Like it's basically a second bond, right? No? Yeah. Yeah. I so would it be is there a is there a scenario in which the town doesn't borrow the money but the friends of the Dugavine does that still exist? Borrows yeah. the money? So, that would be a commercial loan of some sort. Have a whole different Aren't they a non? Aren't the friends a non? It's a non-profit, yeah. right? Um, it, we haven't explored it. I don't. Okay. I don't know. All right. um, we, I certainly could explore it. Could. Um, yeah. Um. This is a hard. One. This is a hard one because the, the timing is such. You want to get. Like you want to hold on to EF Wall because I, we, I think everybody gets it. Like you went out to bid, or you, you started the process and your your budget was smaller. You went out to bid, like oh no. You, then you raise money to fill that gap. You go out to bid again and it's gone up again, and you just keep chasing it. So I, I totally understand wanting to grab hold of it and just get it done. Um, I know you've cut as many courses as you can, Jody, but is there any way the scale the project so you, there's like more phases or it just all has to be? We already um, been through value engineering last year and essentially what we had bid out this year was the value engineered project. It had already come down. Okay. Yeah. And it, it isn't, I mean, despite the seemingly large price tag, it's not really a huge project. I can't imagine phasing it in any reasonable way. No, we tried that last year with like uh, not finishing the basement, the basement. Yeah. it just didn't save that much money and the USDA wasn't very happy with it and we already kind of went through that process and as it is we have some of the finishings for the basement on the alternate list so we've kind of done it that way the phasing is built into the alternates uh, you know the, the the project has a has a big contingency that I don't think we'll use I think these numbers are really Big, but I think 
there's a good chance that we will be able to end up using the contingency in the project and finish out the building. It's a matter of getting getting it to work out on paper so we can sign a contract. <coughs> More, more thoughts? Somebody said I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think Sherry's right. I think we'd have to put it to a vote, and the, the, there's no way we can turn that around. Well, there is, there is the contingent that the vote is not required if it's an expectation of grant funds, and you have a year. You have It's a one-year loan. You can't go past that. And that's the process right, that Casey just laid out. At the end of the one year, the, somebody's going to pay that loan back. Well, Casey was well, just saying, though, that it's the, it's the bank's problem. It's the lending No, it's not the bank's problem because that lends on it. So the other, that's no, the other have, piece of it is it could affect our credit rating absolutely. for future that's bonds. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's... Well, they're on the hook. So, so our, hand, our voters' hands would be tied uh, in that vote. Either vote no or vote yes. Vote no and have bad credit or vote yes and take on the bond. I'm increase voted, the bond. I'm not voter, so you do this or you're not. You're not right. This isn't $200. Million dollars. Yeah. And Jody, you're ba you're basically saying that we should go with the the almost million dollars as the loan. No, five hundred is the five hundred. But that doesn't fill the nine forty. Does not fill the nine forty. But I don't want the town to have a bad. I, I feel. Yeah, well, it's, it that. I don't see asking for half of what you need is. There are other grant sources, even yeah. if the state, the state fund couldn't really be more fitted to our project. We haven't been allowed to apply for it yet. I think that yeah. if that was to not come through, we would continue to receive grant funding. We have Senator Leahy's office who is very eager to help us secure grant funding. And we also have Leahy, Leahy, Senator Leahy has a giant war chest that is kind of a fallback option. I, I don't see us defaulting. I understand that there is an element of risk. And that's why we're suggesting co-signers who would potentially pay the loan if the grants didn't come through. That's Exactly. We understand that you're not comfortable putting it on the taxpayers, so they're mm -hmm. suggesting that. So the bank said that you can get like individuals, individuals. To, to basically pledge that if this doesn't come through, we'll step in and pay it back. Right. And it may be that we require some other legal document that says they're in front of the town. That's what I'm wondering, and that's a question for Bill Davies. I mean, I think we almost treat this similar to any of the economic development yeah. loan funds that we receive where like if this was a business asking for this money we would ask to see those co-signers like, that's mm -hmm. what we would do in our meeting yes. so, and that's so so maybe that's our next step is if there are co like if there are co-signers that are willing to do that if the grants don't come through then it's the town then we then make the decision if we're bridging that gap for the next year, knowing that those co-signers would. So I'm wondering again, back to like if if there are grants expected and if there are co-signers available, does the town even really need to play a role? Like, could right. the loan go to the friends? We can ask that question. Do it. I mean, the I think it's a good suggestion. I yeah. Think the friends, I don't because know. The, the the friends hardly even exist right now. So. Right. Um, I'm not sure if a bank would I'm give a like loan I'm just like throwing that out to, there as an entity. Yeah. As an entity, right. Um, it wouldn't be the town, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be caught in this legal morass of town vote and, you know, the do we really meet the thing about in, in anticipation of grants when we haven't applied for a grant. Well, so if those donors or prospective guarantors are willing to be, you know, on the hook for that, the bank might might say, okay, well, um, you know, you have two hundred thousand dollars in this CD. We're going to put a hold on that CD, so that's kind of like their collateral for the loan. And they do it to the friends. I mean, I would talk to the bank, but I mean, 
if they're so willing. Like so it's basically like a personal loan. Yeah, yeah I mean. Okay. That's, not a, that's a good idea. True union bank. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. Say, yeah, like you said, I mean, if they, they might be willing to do the loan to the friends if they had collateral yep. from those co-signers in the form of, I'm going to pledge my CD so that if this doesn't get paid back, you'll take it from my CD or whatever. It doesn't have to be a CD, but that was just an example. Would that make us unable to use the CD? Right, because the, the people are just putting that up as collateral. And well, so you're, the, you're saying the I thought you were saying the friend the CD that belongs to the library, the building funds. Oh no no no! No, you're no, talking. No, no. About I meant like your your co-signers, your people okay. that are willing to pledge. If they put that in a CD, like if maybe they could do it as a secured account loan, you know. So. Well, what I was talking to the bank about was they're not necessarily moving any funds, but showing the funds available, showing the funds exist. And I'm still waiting for another yeah, reply on whether to make the project whole. So it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, if if we can, if EF wall can come down. I mean, the thing is, if, if EF wall can come down, and maybe we come up a little bit on the loan, and we we have another, we have a year to raise that additional money. The library will fundraise continuously through that time. But. Um, but USDA won't let won't let you sign a contract unless you can prove it's whole, right? Yes. Yeah. And we can't afford to give up that hundred and fifty seven thousand. Yeah. Well and they're also so, administering the six hundred thousand of the year Right. So yeah, so there's it has to show we have to show the project is whole in order to move forward. Well, theoretically, August 22nd is 60 days from the time you open the bids. I mean, if all could, they, have, they can definitely pull out, they but can pull out. they could also stay in if they want to work through. So if we got a little bit of information, a little bit more information about this, these other loan options, um, maybe, I don't know. Next week. I mean, our next, this still would be kind fourth. of a time cut, but the fourth is fairly, that's not the night before, before the deadline. A couple of weeks. I mean, does that yeah. seem? Keep working. Okay. So, and then at that time, Jody, you hopefully you'd have a better idea of EF, if EF wall comes down a little bit, and then we might have a better idea of what logistically, I guess, CD or co-signers would actually look like. Maybe. Is that what we're asking? And have you talked to anybody at Union Bank? I did. I talked to Tina. Tina Nolan. Norton. She, yeah. Nor okay. Yeah. She. She said that they would not take co-signers. That's why they, they if, if there were co-signers, it would have to be a commercial loan. So, but if we're doing it through the friends, and it was going to be a commercial loan. Anyways, it's worth talking to them both. And the difference there is the commercial loan would have a higher interest rate. Is that? Is that what? The commercial loan would have a higher interest rate. It has a higher interest rate. Yeah. Yes. So it eats into your pro your funds. It eats into yeah. the funds. Yeah. So it's, I think this is a good time to move that we allocate the remaining forty-eight thousand dollars in the ARPA funds to the library project. Why? She just moved it. Does that have a second? Apparently not. Um, sorry, that was just a quick change in conversation. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> can we, do you mind if we just wrap the... There's a motion on the okay, table. Okay, there's a motion it could, table. It could die. If it doesn't have a second, it doesn't move for a while. We could um, revisit. If you want to say something else, go ahead. No, I just want to make, make sure that... Well, anyway, there's a motion on the, on the table. Um, you want to make sure. No, I just want to make sure that we're really clear because Jody's doing a lot of work in April and August 4th is not that far away. I just want to make sure that she knows what we're asking for her so to give us. I think um, some, yeah. Uh, 
So I think, though, that we have concern. I think there, I'm hearing mutterings on the board that people have concerns about, um, about it going through the town. So, uh, you know, I think that But it we sounds have, like between Casey and Jody and Banker Talk that there are maybe, maybe a, a couple ways to look at it differently that we can't, we don't have answers to tonight because, you know, things need to be juggled and people need to be talked to. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And I, you know, I, I can't second the motion because I feel like the ARPA funds we've got two years to to deal with those and use those. And our goal going in was to try to um, close the gap for people. It's not going to even touch closing the gap for the That's library, and I'd like to see. Um, it's not going to close it, but it's going to push. It's going to lessen it. Yeah, but we have multiple grants and projects that we're potentially working on for the roof for this building that will need matches that we don't have uh, in our budget. Thank so you. my idea was with the remaining 48,000 that potentially we would find um, ways to use that to actually, you know, do a whole project Why? that is is overdue as well. I mean, I just, you know, it's only 48 though. It's not, not that much money, but it's it could make a grant happen sure. that we don't have a budget for, budget I mean, plan for. I will say that we provided not the total amount of asks for everybody, but we provided everybody who provided an application with ARPA funds. With something. So, um, so, apply so in every, good faith and didn't. So, I mean, the motion is for the full 48, but um, my thought is maybe we do 40, and then there's that eight to do, which is not a massive amount, but for something like a matching grant. Like maybe there, maybe we have a conversation about not the whole because that's basically it. We've like committed every dollar of the ARPA funds, and I understand feeling uncomfortable with that. But we've also given a lot of we've given a lot of money to organizations that are just starting that are really there's a full gamut of, diff of different things. Mm -hmm. And the only project I think that we've given money to that's really going to close the gap is the sewer project. There are a lot of other projects like the Grange project, which is just in the beginning of their budget project. It's not as shovel ready, like. I think that the ARPA funds have funded a very diverse group of organizations um, and that we should give something to the library. So my motion died. Are you moving $40,000? <laughs> um, I don't have a number. I mean, I, I also agree with Sherry that it's not going to be close to what they need, but I think it'll still help. So um, I would move that we, that we start by giving them, what did we give? Hold on, I'm looking at the minutes. Give me a second. So we have to do that today. I, I, I would move I that we... Wanna, oh, well, I, I, I just want to add that we, as the town, through the bond vote, have committed $550,000 to this project. We also committed that with the sewer project and then also gave ARPA funds to the sewer project. So well, there's a huge difference between the municipal wastewater plant and the library. Sure, sure. There. A lot of people don't. But we have but, given both. So I'm just saying, right. and yep. just, just as an example, we have, you right. know. Um, but what we thought the it's not going to fix it. It's not going to fix the problem of the shortfall. Right. And I think we should, we can do a better job finding solutions to fix that problem. My motion is to give them $35,000, which is what we gave the civic standard. Okay. It can die on the table, but that's my motion. I'll second it. With, with seconds. So that would leave. I don't like this <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that's why we're voting, Danny. I know. That's, that's, why, why, they're, that's why they're yays that's and the nays. Process. So that would leave us with. Thirteen thousand dollars in ARPA funds mm -hmm. to spend.
Well, I mean, <laughs> when I read all the applications for the ARPA funds, I think I sent somebody a text and said, uh, let's just buy a gravel pit instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, that's another, that's a, another option too. But uh, that ship has sailed. It is. Gone. So, uh, <laughs> any can, other discussion other than can, my... Can we... Can we... Table it issue, issue can we well vote on the ARPA funds but if we can find a solution to rectify the, the bridge Overall. loan and make this project whole in another way can we pull those back so this is this I was gonna bring this up in old business but I think we need to have a conversation about ARPA funds in general how we're giving them out like when we're writing the check if the project doesn't happen, are we taking that money back? <coughs> um, I think we need to decide, and, and there are other towns that are doing this too, like we're, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but I think we need right. to have a process oh, for wow. if this project doesn't happen by 2025, we have to take that money, we're not giving you that money because then we have another year to spend it. Or maybe there's a project that comes in less and they don't use all that money, fantastic. It can work like the general fund, and that we take that money and use it for a different project. But we haven't talked about that yet. So, right. so this is so, so. My motion is just to commit the thirty-five thousand dollars to the library to be spent over the next three years, because that's when we can spend the ARPA funds, um, and we can come up with a process for that, how that's going to look. But that's just like basically all we've done with ARPA funds right now is committed them. We haven't actually given the dollars to anybody. But once we do then we've spent yep. it. So yep. it doesn't matter we if they don't do their project for three years. On our books, we've spent it. So that the Unless we require that they, um, that we don't issue a check until they right. hit some right. milestone. Exactly. Right. As a person, well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that Which might be a, not a bad idea to create a policy yeah. surround, surrounding, and we probably should have done that before we given it out. So I just have one other thought relative to committing ARPA funds to the library, and that is, it sounds like we're going to try to do a bunch of work. Some people are going to work to have some more information and answers for our next meeting, which is the fourth. Um, so we could also, that, I mean, we have years on the ARPA funds that will still be there next time. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have a clearer picture of what the landscape is. Sure, and is this closing a gap? Sure. These are all valid points. I think we, I just, just in terms of the ARPA funds, I think we committed dollars, as I said earlier, to organizations that were in very different yeah. places no, in their I projects. Yeah. Some didn't give us an estimate of the cost. Yeah. The library's given us an estimate of the cost. They know how much it's going to cost. <clears throat> I think if we commit these dollars, we can come up with a process of how we're, those are being reported on, anything like that. But I just, I think the application was solid, and yeah. 35 is what I'm motioning. Okay. And with seconded it. And I seconded it. Close to 10% of the ask. And no more. Okay. All in favor of committing 35,000 of the ARPA funds to the library project, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nay, I'd rather wait till next time. I'd rather wait. I don't want to do it tonight. Motion carries. So that leaves us with 13,000 uncommitted. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Jody, for coming out in the heat and for persevering for years. Mm -hmm. I'm confident we can. You are? Yeah. All right. Opie's going to try to stay positive. I appreciate Excellent. your support, Opie. <laughs> What's happening? I appreciate it. Yeah. Have a good, good night. night. Thank you. All right. Um, I, 11. Item number 11 is select board to receive East Hardwick walkability audit for discussion at a future meeting. We did receive it. Yep. yep. Yeah, received. I just kind of passed it out to me. Yeah, great. So this is for your viewing and it was for in next our time. Packet too, and right? it was, was also the on there, um, yes. and then a paper copy for you. But great. because our agenda was so full, take yeah. some time to review it, and I will talk about another meeting. 
Great. Yeah. What's What's the conversation going to be like? What, what, well, what's it my, feel? I get the sense that maybe somebody from the Planning Commission wants to come planning and talk about it. Planning Commission has, uh, yeah. you know, the, our focus in the has been to do, to go ahead and do these walk audits of the different areas that seem to need, you know, prioritization. Um, and then the idea was that maybe we end up doing something, you know, we're looking for opportunities to get resources to fund it. We just did the audit. I the select board can decide what oh, yeah. what we yeah. do with it, but it's more information than we had before with just various requests to fix the sidewalks and it's hard. Yep. I was just wondering what I should be thinking about concrete. to bring to the constant to the conversation in two weeks. Coffee. <laughs> yeah. I don't drink it. No. It's Tea. Just, you know, it's just background so okay. that we, you know, we start to see opportunity come up. Yeah, okay. So, select board reports, new business, old business. I just think to go back to that old business, business with the ARPA funds, I don't know if it makes sense to have, like, I'm happy to volunteer to figure out process for those. I've, I've heard from a couple of people that we're giving money to that they weren't sure, they were like, thank you, now what? And I would be willing to work with you. So I don't know if they're, I'm sure there are other towns that are doing this. Casey, I don't know if it makes sense to just meet, maybe the three of us meet and just talk about, you know, do we have milestones that applicants ask for the money, receive the money, is it reimbursement, like what are we allowed to do or not do? And it's a little bit different, I think, for the, the groups that are under the town umbrella than it is for the nonprofits that have applied who are not an entity of the town. So I think it'd be great if we kind of got I know a the, process. The CUD is per, uh, is preparing a contract, yep. and I, I don't know that process. Once Paul and the executive director get that figured out, they'll present it to us, so we'll get a better idea about the broadband. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially the town providing a grant to other organizations, and a, a contract is pretty standard, yep. um, or at least like a letter of acceptance, and then um, or it's a little bit more like an appropriation than a yeah, grant. Yeah. I mean, it's just a chunk of money that goes to them. Yeah. Right? Like the appropriation. So when you get an appropriation, I think the, the organization, I, I'm just, you know, going by what Neckarts does, the organization requests the appropriation and Casey holds it in the budget until <coughs> we request it. And if we mess up and don't request it, she lets us know that it's still there and we're going to lose it if we don't request it. You know, fairly simple, straightforward. And it can be that simple and straightforward. I just think we need to have a process for it. So, so. if you guys want to work on that, that's great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other new business, old business, or reports? Chamber players are at the townhouse tonight, too. Oh, tonight? Mm -hmm. Thursday we nights it? through August. Yes. We missed Starts it. Starts at 7.30. We always miss it, um, but other people don't, yeah. Okay, that's great. And voting will be, primary voting will be at the townhouse on August 9th. 9 to 7. The 9? 9, 9 to 7. August 9th, Tuesday. Tuesday, August is 9th. primary voting day in Vermont. Didn't you get the postcard from the Secretary of State's office? Mm, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, the whole primary thing is, anyway. Well, anyway, That's how they do it. I know, but it's weird. All right, anything else? So I need a motion to, uh, to have just the board go into executive session pursuant to 1 VSA 313 to discuss personnel evaluation. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, so we're going to go do that, and after that, we're done because we're not taking any action. And that's without OP. Yeah, it's just us. Okay. And do, do you want to meet in the there? memorial room? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You can be in the.